Hello everybody, I'm Gleb and this is my video about 5G conditional handovers. Let's get started. Please note, this video is only for general information. This is not a technical advice and please use your own official guidelines, manuals and data sheets from your vendor. And before we start talking about conditional handover, I would like to review uh, what common failures may occur during mobility procedures? We all know that mobility, it is uh, about RSC connected mode. It means that user equipment is already in RSC mode. It has active RSC connection and it sent measurements. So if we look at example from the left side, here user equipment assumed uh, pre-configured with event-based measurements. If some measurements, for example, A2, A3 measurements is activated and triggered, user equipment send measurement reports to base station and will wait for further decisions from base station. But usually uplink is a bottleneck in any wireless networks. Very common situation is when measurement reports and uplink signal basically cannot reach base station. Base station cannot decode that message because low signal to noise ratio, for example. And if that happens, serving signal getting worse and worse. And then at some, at some certain uh, point of time, UE will declare radio link failure because it will lost connection in downlink direction as well. What does it mean? It means that connection drops. It means that user equipment will go to idle mode, perform reselection to your new cell, perform reestablishment, reconfiguration messages. So this is a very bad situation, especially for real-time services, especially for voice services. I mean, real voice over NR or voice over LTE for streaming, for any real-time services, because in this case, it will be drop it will be connection drop. So very bad situation. It can negatively impact on user ex experience because in case of non real time services, for example, just internet browsing, such a connection drop may not be so visible for end user because in a few seconds, uh, connection will be reestablished again. But for real time services, this is a very uh, problem situation. So another situation is when we look at right side of my examples is when again, the UE configured with uh, event triggering measurements, it sent measurements. And let's suppose that everything is okay in uplink and base station is able to receive and decode that measurements. After that, base station may decide that there is a need for handover, for handover connection from that cell to any target cells. And it sent handover command to user equipment. But at that certain point of time, when base station is sending handover command message, maybe some downlink problems may occur at that point of time because in some cases user equipment very fast moving and at that point of time when handover command delivering it can be a problem in downlink direction so in this case serving signal getting worse and worse and at some point of time ue will declare radio link failure and again it will go to idle mode re-establishing re uh, reconnection procedures and again this is a very bad situation especially for real-time services and it should be avoided not only because of user experience side bad for a network side because any re-establishments it is very very signaling heavy procedures for net so it also should be avoided in order to prevent that situations that radio link failures and handover failures in release 16 was designed conditional handover basically conditional handover it is when base station configures user equipment with special triggering conditions uh, when handover should be executed and how it should be executed. So when that special conditions is fulfilled, you execute handovers without any handover commands, without any measurement reports uh, in uplink directions. So 
It means uh, because handover command was already sent to Yui in earlier with uh, that special note about conditional handover. And uh, by doing that, it increased uh, the probability of successful messages between UE and base station because it will help to avoid uh, very bad radio conditions at cell edge. In preparation phase of conditional handover, source base station prepares potential target nodes, target cells, base stations, including that special indicator that conditional handover, including it in handover request sending current uh, UE configuration. So based on that information, potential targets, base stations, they, they create a special configuration and they ready for receiving that user equipment in case of a handover execution in their direction. The source node decides thresholds for that event, for that conditions and provide it in advance for user equipment. UE monitors that handover triggering conditions for all possible potential target cells. And when condition is fulfilled, it executes handover to certain one target cell. You will delete any handover configurations for other potential target cells if it was successful handover with certain target cell. Now let's finally look at this uh, handover preparation diagram. Here we can see that user equipment is pre-configured with event-based measurements, but before porting that measurements, you is configured with special conditional handover triggers. It helps you to transmit measurement reports in advance when when everything is more or less okay in uplink and in downlink direction. Then based on that measurement report, as usual, uh, base station decide handover if there is a need for handover or not and send handover request to potential targets, cells and nodes. At their side, they decide if they able to receive that handover, that connection, that new user equipment. Basically, they perform admission control and if everything is okay from their side, they request, they reply with um, handover request acknowledged and all of that conditional handover configuration sent to user equipment. And UE try to keep that configuration and waits for that special event fulfillment in order to start execution phase. And in execution phase, when that certain criteria, uh, criteria is fulfilled, for example, in target node number one, RSC send handover configuration complete to that cell if everything is okay, uh, handover success, and uh, RSC reconfiguration complete will be very probably delivered and received by that target base station because it was in advance, because measurements and decision about handover was made in advance. So there is a high probability that this handover message will be delivered to target number one base station. So if everything is okay, that base station reply with handover success and source base station becomes aware that everything is okay, connection is handovered and it sent message to others and useful base stations, uh, which was pre-configured before, to release conditional handover uh, resources. And after that, that source base station perform data forwarding to that new base station. So as you can see from that diagrams, conditional handover, it is, uh, it is a kind of attempt to give a little bit more freedom to user equipment side, evaluate when handover and how to perform handover. But of course, network still plays a huge role even in this case. Now I would like to highlight handover aspects. User equipment uh, can be optionally configured maximum up to two execution conditions. It can be, for example, RSRP and RSRQ or RSRP and SNR. That conditions should be both related to reference signals. As an example, a source base station, as we already mentioned, responsible for setting execution conditions and target base stations, they're responsible for providing handover command containing 
the target cell specific configuration. But there is a difference between legacy handover and conditional handover in 5G. When UE receive conditional handover command, it does not detach from source base station. It continues transmit uplink downlink information because that command was in advance, that command was in a pretty good radio condition and wait until handover execution condition is met. User equipment may be configured with multiple potential candidates for that type of handover, but uh, UE is allowed to try to make an attempt only to one cell. So there is no any parallel handovers to another potential target cells any attempts. So there is no any random access attempts to another potential cells. I think this is because of this will increase the complexity of user equipment and network. So um, I think this is obvious. And just a few things about data forwarding in release 16, you can find two types of data forwarding is early data forwarding and late. Early is when uh, data is when tr data transmission new cell initiated before the you execute handover just in advance. And this is very good in terms of latency. Uh, and late data forwarding is um, only applicable for conditional handover. And it is later after user equipment successfully accessed the target node. Also, I would like to briefly touch some handover issues. Uh, so source base station cannot exactly predict um, when UE meet that special condition, which was sent in advance. So it is a kind of a tricky problem, I would say, you know, to decide when and how exactly forwarding of data should be performed. Another issue is related to user equipment, how, how you, UE will perform the choosing of potential target candidates based on what? Based on signal quality priority, which was sent from base station uh, or any UE implementation aspects. And finally, I would like to uh, tell about reference and links. So of course, this is 3GPP specifications and uh, there is a pretty good article for my recommendation to you. It is conditional handover in 5G principles, future use cases and FR2 performance which you can find in the internet. So it was my short lesson about conditional handover aspects in 5G networks. If you like this lesson, you can like and subscribe to my channel. Goodbye.